Today in Adobe Illustrator, we're gonna be talking about how to create a pattern. I love patterns. Knowing how to do these creates a new layer to your versatility and your ability to use this software. So let's go ahead and get started. I've written out the instructions for you, but I'm gonna give you a tour of how to use the patterns effectively. And I've given you a set of objects here that you can use to make patterns with. So first thing first, we're gonna open up our patterns panel in order to do this. So it's under window and we're gonna go down here until our pattern options. And I just like to have this panel up. You can see that I usually have mine docked here because I do use it quite a bit. So in order for us to make a pattern, we have to select whatever the pattern is that we are wanting to create. And then we're gonna go to the object menu. We're gonna say pattern and we're going to say make. Now, one of the things that you're gonna notice is everything's going to shift and it's gonna tell you that the new pattern has been added to the swatches panel. You can click don't show this again. Me, I kind of like it as a reminder. And now I'm gonna move this around so that you can kind of see my pattern options. Now, here's my swatches. I'm gonna move these and make this a large thumbnail so you, you can see there is my pattern right there. But if I don't like the way this looks, I wanna be able to make adjustments. So every grouping of objects is called a tile. And in this tile, we have different choices. So this is the grid. I'm gonna show you that is by row and it's like a brick pattern. You can kind of see them shift and I'm gonna change this one to column. And now you can see that those tiles are in a column format. We also can change the offset. So I can change how far apart those bricks are. So I just want you to see as I change how they're changing, the pattern changes and adjusts the way I want it. I can also do by hex. I like a hex tile, I think the most, but you do have to be very careful about the way things are arranged. So if you do not love the way a tile has been created, I'm actually gonna switch this to a three by three so it's not quite so visually overwhelming. Um, hex by row or hex by column, it just kind of depends on the one you wanna do. Um, one of the things I wanna do though is I wanna move around my objects and I have to look at the vertical and the horizontal movement. So what I'm gonna do is here's my selection and that yellow circle overlaps with that blue. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna start rearranging objects independently. And then this way I can actually start to create a different pattern than, than what is automatically given to me just by selecting the different grids. The nice thing about this is you can create a pattern and then continue to rearrange that pattern until you get it the way you want it to do. So if you don't love this one, maybe I'm gonna go back to my, my brick by row. I'm gonna change the overlap here. That looks pretty good, but I still don't love some of the spacing here. So I'm gonna start moving things around until I get it to the, be the way that I want it to be. But you can see everything's kind of grouped up here. So I'm definitely gonna have to say ungroup so now that I can rearrange individual items, see what I'm doing? And the goal is to create a balanced pattern, both this way and this way, because I don't want to have a crazy amount of white space. I also want to make sure that nothing touches so that when I move this here, I don't want this to be touching over here. I also want to make sure that my pattern is balanced. I just gave you a general pattern. You have to determine the way you want it. And not only can you change the placements, but I can also change the size or the rotation of my objects. So what I'd like you to do for this first activity is we are going, and I'm gonna say that looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit escape to get out of it. And I'm gonna start creating my patterns. If you'll notice the grid, now the swatch over here looks a little different. So I'm just gonna throw in a random shape and I'm gonna click on the swatch and now it's being filled in. One of the things I do want you to note is as you move it, the pattern's going to change. So that is something to keep in mind. Notice that I'm not increasing the size of the pattern, just the size of the shape. So once you get it kind of the way you want it, if that's the way you want it to look, you do have to say object, expand, and now it's locked down in the pattern itself and you can actually increase or decrease. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to try making a grid, a hex by column, 
a hex by row, a brick by row with a one quarter offset and a brick by column with a two thirds offset. Again, I've given you the directions here to help you. And then I want you to give me a screenshot of all of your five different patterns made and take a screenshot of your swatches panel and put it here so that we can see all five of your swatches. The last activity here on the last page is I want you to make your own pattern. So what I've done is I've given you a series of objects that are school related. Yes, don't you know come for me, they're a little cheesy. A student of mine drew these, so I really just love the work she did on these. So what I want you to do is kind of start with how would you arrange these items to make an interesting pattern? Here's an example of my pattern. In addition to changing the size, the scale, where they go, I also want you to change the colors if you want. You can come through here and change if you don't like the lime green and maybe you're a dark blue, light blue girl or person or human. Maybe you don't like this green and you want everything to be shades of blues and purples. And then I want you to go through and make the changes that you want to the items and then create your pattern. Remember, think about scale, think about the vertical and the horizontal alignment. And I put those hints for you as well. And then remember that after you make your swatch and you fill the shape in down here, if you don't love the way it looks, you can rearrange. Hopefully this will start inspiring you to make your own patterns and you have a lot of options that you can make. You can do wallpapers, you can do patterns, you can do um, fabrics, all sorts of different things, background images, so much versatility in patterns. So hope you enjoy and happy patterning.